Hey Will, this is a nice hotel we've stayed at. Where, what is it? <laughs> Really see it, but we're, 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 we're staying here tonight as well. For okay, real. lovely. And and do you? How much did you pay for it? What do you mean? Do I pay for it? How much did you pay to stay? What do you mean? Is it a freebie? No. Listen, you stay down as well. Don't make out hey, for me. Hey, it's not that it's a freebie. It was a freebie. Listen, thanks to your contact. No, listen. They invited us, but Bradbury Hall. This is obviously we're leaving it now, but Bradbury Hall. It's been a part of my life, all my life, because uh, I grew up here. Um, played football on that pitch there. Oh, really? Yeah. Yes. What, well, when you were a kid? Exactly, like Wembley. Hey, <laughs> listen, it'll do. Sunday League. It'll do. What? Um, yeah, well, this was... Um, quick pub quiz question for you. Yeah. Where was the first time you and I ever played an actual game of football on? Any type of football, five a side, anything. Where was the first time? What was the first location you and I ever played football together? I think it was Wembley. Wembley Stadium. Wembley Stadium. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that not bad, is it? It's not bad. And I scored three goals in two games. It was... Uh, it was so did I. It was... Um, it was the closing um, games, wasn't it? They were closing Wembley down, Wembley yeah, knocking the, it down. The old, the old Wembley, The yeah. old Wembley, yeah. I remember lying on the pitch at, at, at the halfway line, looking up, just yeah. going, oh my God. Yes. And we, we, we were saying, just think how many pe how many professional footballers have never, never played it. there. Never played and we them. fucking, us dickheads, yeah. running around. Like now 20 and 22 or whatever, that was our first, no, 22, 22. I'll never forget there was a celebrity match once that you were playing and you was going, Peter, Beardo, to Peter Beardsley, shocking. Shouting at me. <laughs> Oh, I told you the story about. I told you about how I bollocked Roy Keane. Right? You bollocked Roy Keane? Oh, no. we'll oh save, my! We'll, we'll, oh save, it. we'll my save it for the podcast. God! We'll save it for the podcast. You bollocked Roy Keane. Mate, we'll just. I won't. Talk I about can't. It. You can't talk about that while I'm driving because I'll need full concentration. Right, we'll, we'll save it for the podcast. But yeah, I've got a few stories like that. Me bollocking Roy Keane. Right. Well, we are now. Um, I bollocked Rob Lee so much when I played with him. That's not so bad. Like, he really was like fucking hell. No one's ever given me that much shit. Not even you do take your football very seriously, <laughs> don't you? When you're on that pitch. Fucking you... right. I'm pretty easy going like in real life, but not when I get on the football. Nice area. It was a car just smashed up in the ground in the garden. And this is your love. This, this is, is where I come from. Yes. <laughs> Are we going to go past like your estate where you're I'll, I'll drive, I'll, I'll take us in a bit, yeah. I'm thinking we're going to Ricky Atten's now and I don't want to be late for Ricky, you know what right, I mean? Okay. Um, we're going to be there um, in about 10 minutes. Yeah, but yeah, we're going to go and uh, have, a, have a little chat with Ricky Atten. How good's yeah. that? I'm, I'm very much into it. An absolute legend. Unbelievable. It's going to be interesting because boxing. you know, you're really, really big into your boxing passion. You were a pretty yeah. good boxer back as a, in a, yeah. as a kid. Yeah. You really, really know a lot of it. I'm very much like the occasional armchair fan. Yeah, yeah. Um, I do love it. But in fact, to be honest, I don't know if you remember this, but I, um, my, my interest in it was really properly sparked when we were doing two points together. We sat in the Daresbury Park in Runcorn, yeah. and that Oscar De La Hoya fought, I think, Floyd Mayweather. Yeah, and I thought he beat him. And you thought, and you were like, we're cheering for De La Hoya. I was like, why? You were telling me about the Golden Boy and all this sort of stuff. Yeah. And you, you, it was really interesting because every time, every time you you called something, you went, oh, that's uh, great. Okay. Like, like he's managed to get inside Mayweather now. Yeah. I'm like, what does that mean? You're like, well, he's got beyond his reach and working yeah. inside. And then the commentators would go. It's great for Oscar <laughs> Del Hoya that he's inside Floyd Merrill. I was like, fucking Will really knows his stuff here. Yeah, no, I, um, I, I love my boxing. I mean, so, I absolutely love it. So it's going to be interesting meeting Ricky because I, I and I met him because I played soccer in with him, and he was legend. He was like, what a great guy. But I was also really, really, you know, I followed him when he was when he fought Mayweather, and I followed him as, like towards that later end of his career. Yeah. But it's going to be really interesting to be with you talking to him because you really, really know your stuff. See the Queen's pub there. Yeah. That's where I used to play football for and darts and I work behind the bar. <laughs> basically should have owned it. <laughs> basically, you were running the place. Yeah, no. But yeah, no, uh, yeah. I mean, I'm interested, I've not seen Ricky for a while, um, and uh, no, it's going to be good to catch up, but I think for, for people um, who are going to tune into this podcast and that, I think, you know, it's, it's, to, it's, it's to work. Oh, that was narrow. It was narrow. Sorry, yeah. it's, to, it's to sort of know the behind the scenes, what goes on as a boxer, the life of a boxer, but also Ricky personally, you know what I mean, just, how he dealt with it all and the fame side of it and the ups and downs of boxing and also what happens after the when the lights fade, you know what I mean? That'd be all interesting to know. Yeah. And also he's got a bar at his house. Oh imagine. <laughs> We're gonna go and sit in his house and have a beer. Great, that'll be literally like a pint and a half for me and you, and then we'll be like, oh you got any alcohol free, can I have a lemonade? <laughs> yeah, that's true. Well I am driving Ralph. Well that's true. 
But no, it's going to be good. Nobody, Looking forward to it. We didn't film any of it. We went out last night, didn't we? Just like cameras off. And we went, oh, I'll have a beer. We had one beer. And they said, we'll have a second beer. And then a third beer came along and I couldn't even drink it. <laughs> but you had, had a lot of food. We had a lot of food. <laughs> That's true. But like, time's gone by, it'd be like, right, three before I start. No, uh, not now only that. And now we're like, nah, you're all right. Once we finished, it'd be like, right, what's open on a Monday? <laughs> <I know. laughs> and we went, we're, let's go back to the hotel. Let's go back to the hotel. <laughs> it got to about half nine, we're both like, yeah, yeah. oh, I'm going to call it a night. See you yeah. tomorrow. What, what are you like? But then you went and you said the, this is the first time. I've been to a hotel, I brought me jammers and I, and I came down in my comfies. Mate, your comfies, they were they were shocking. They're not. Can we talk about your crap yeah. comfies? Why are they crap? Them? My kids took me to the Muhammad Ali Museum at the, near the Millennium Dome. Uh, my missus, for my birthday, Millennium Dome. Oh, sorry. Um, and, it, and as a treat, um, I got I got shorts and a matching sleeveless hoodie from Muhammad Ali, the greatest. I just, I guess, out of context, they were quite weird to, to see in the middle Probably of the Debrie Hall Hotel. But with his there by comfies. Thing, he like, hey, I'm just in my comfies. And he came down. This is what he did. About half an hour, he's like, I'm off to bed. See you. Good night. Well, it was a good hour. We're going to watch something. Com comes back down into the bar in his ridiculous outfit. <laughs> 15 minutes later, goes to the barman. Hey, can I have a glass? He said, oh, a glass of what? Do you want some wine? He goes, no, no, I bought some from the shop. It's cheap. It's cheaper. Wait, wait, I listen. bought a bottle from the shop. You get a bottle for a tenner. I just need a glass. £12 pound a glass. Are you fucking mad? Listen, in always a, thinking. In a hotel that's already putting him up for free. Listen, listen. When I walk to hotels, my bags go clink, 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 clink. <laughs> I think Same probably, as walking up going to the cinema. Do you know what I like as well? This is a little trick for everyone who's out there. Obviously, um, with, um, with when it's winter and you don't have a fridge in your room, you think, oh, I can't have a beer, it'll get warm. What I do <coughs> is I keep the bag that I buy the beers in and I hook it and put it through the window and hook it on the window. Nice, nice. So the cold from outside keeps <coughs> it chill. It's like my own little chiller. Nice, nice. I've got a balcony this town, so I literally just stuck. I've got, I got, I've got some cheese, some chocolate, some beer on the balcony, just sat there waiting for me to get home. He told us about that last night as well. He's like, oh, I've got some dairy milk and got some fruit and milk. We're like, oh, great. Where'd you get that from? He said, I popped out to the shop. Yeah. I said, did you get anything for us? He went, no, fuck off. Well, hang on. We're didn't my give psychic. Me, didn't give me shit. The shop's there. Didn't you can ask. Go on. Didn't ask. Didn't ask. Yeah. Unbelievable. It's, not himself it's great driving around here, man. This is that. I mean, obviously, this is getting out of Bradbury now, but we um, just played out. It's there against that team, the navigation. <laughs> Yeah, you used to go watch my dad play darts there. Lots of memories around here. So, yeah, it's it's interesting because, you know, I've always said, because it's easier through the years, when people go, where are you from? It's easier to say Manchester. I'm not from Manchester, I'm from Bury. It's like a small I say Manchester because... A small town. Well, yeah. exactly, but I've always thought of you as someone who was much more kind of truly within the city, but actually, this is sort of like its own little town, where you're from. Well, well it's, I'm from Stockport, Bredbury and Stockport, but that's where I grew up, my young days, and then I moved um, to uh, Worsley in Salford, uh, Manchester, and I spent my older years there, so I spent a lot of time there, so I am from here, but I spent a lot of time there as well, so, and you're right, it is when people actually just say Manchester, because people know where it is, it stops yeah. you going into Bredbury, where's Bredbury, Stockport, where's Stockport, Manchester, right, I get there. Mate, well, I'll be down south, people know where you're from, if I said Bury, they'd go, oh, Bury St Edmunds, <laughs> I have a father who owns a cheese shop there. <laughs> How wonderful! <laughs> like, no, not Bury St Edmunds. Bury. Have you ever been? Have you ever been in a boxing gym and tried boxing, or had a go at it, or hit a bag, or speed listen, ball? Or... Listen, listen. You did Children's Ward, right? Yes. Well, so did I. I did seven episodes of Children's Ward. It was the last job I did before I got the Royal Family. Really? I didn't stop laughing because you know this is going to be a funny thing. My character. <laughs> my character was a champion kickboxer. Right. Obviously, it took who, a lot of hits to the face. Who tried to? Yeah. <laughs> who, no, it was a, it was a lot straighter. Than it, was, it was pre accident. Who, you like um, the Nero? You broke it for the part. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm, I'm method, right? Listen, as we've said many a time, you've got some schnoz on you. I know. This is all just deflection. <laughs> That's why I, I, I know say your it. deflection is like, oh look at his nose. Please don't look at mine. It's true. Listen, right. listen. It's right. like fat people can call each other fat because they're all fat. <laughs> yeah. So it's like I can say say about your nose. My nose is a bit bent and long as well. Yeah. Carry on. Anyway, so. I played this champion kickboxer who was like impatient and wanted to like learn this move for a competition or something and like uh, like this weird spinning kick that I wasn't good enough to do and he tries it when his coach isn't around and he does his ACL and then he's in he's in for seven weeks but the point is I had to have 17 I had to have a few weeks 
kickboxing training to try and look like I was... Oh, did you? Yeah. And to be fair, I don't think any of it worked. I don't think I looked at all like I could really? do it. Well, I don't know. I mean, look, I was, I was pretty sporty, I'm sure. It was, it was only children's one. I, I just had to fake it for camera, but I'm not saying that I remember any of it. But what yeah. I will say is this. I've played, I've played almost every sport to one level or another. I've had a go at almost all of them. And there is nothing, nothing like boxing, like shadow boxing and bag work that, it, that it, I found even close to, like there's nothing as exhausting as that. It's the hardest yeah. thing I've ever done. And yeah. you'll know that, like well, they you used did. to do it. But the but problem honestly, is I was you, you think like one minute, bang, bang, on the, on the bag or whatever. Yeah. Oh my God, you're I'm, dead. You literally count on a second going, I can't do two And imagine seconds. if someone was trying to hit you while you're doing that. Exactly, a lot of time, exactly. And, and it, what they call it, nervous energy. Um, that you can be great in the gym, but as soon as you get in the ring, you get knackered with nervous energy yeah. because your your body tensions up and you're preparing yourself to be hit as well yeah. as eating. Yeah. So you've got to be. You got to, if you want to box for twelve rounds, you've got thirty six rounds. You've got to be out of box for because yeah. to go, to compensate yourself. Yeah. So, the Cheshire cheese. Only if that's his. Only if that's his local. He does like a beer, Ricky. I'll tell you that. He does like a beer. Famously so. Famously so, yeah. Right. Bowl Acre Road. Right, we're on here. Now we've got a... So it's on this road somewhere. I think it's called the Heartbreak. The Heartbreak? Well, that's what he sent me. He sent me a text saying it's the Heartbreak. His house is called the Heartbreak. I think so. We'll have to ask him why. <laughs> why laughing? Because I just hope he's laughing and don't get serious on us. Because, I, I, mind you, I've got quite fast running shoes on. Is that it there? No, I can't. It says we've arrived. Is that it? I think that's it. No. What number? What number is it? It says the heartbreak. I don't fucking know. It doesn't have a number. Okay, well, that's got a name on it. Keep going. Lowcroft. See, see if we can find a name. Elmfield. Broadmeadow. Yeah, keep going. Oaklands. I love that it's the heartbreak on Ball Lake Road. White Gates. Ball Lake. Lake. Some gas up here, aren't there? Yeah, some nice houses. Brookfield. Here. The here heartbreak, go. here we are. Oh, fucking size! <laughs> <laughs> Look at the size! The biggest one on the fucking street! We just looked for the names and then we went, ah! <laughs> Fucking hell! Might as well have called it Heartbreak Hotel. You <laughs> see the size well. of it. Well, listen, we should have brought our ship. We could have stayed in the West Wing. Mate, it looks like we're, we're going into The Shining. <laughs> Where's the flag? City. Oh, it's a city flag. Uh, we're not parking we in there. Did... Bollocks! <laughs> Bollocks, Ricky! How did we not see the flag? Right, um, we're here. Let's do this. That is some gaff, by the way. 